a delhi and lahore both share such a common and varied past in the sense that uh, if you were to look at uh, i mean the most recent uh, one is the colonial uh, heritage so lahore has all uh, sorts of colonial buildings uh, you know uh, across uh, its downtown and uh, various other parts you know uh, and you have a striking similarity in so many uh, forms of architecture and then of course the mughal period you know we have the badshahi mosque and there's jama masjid in uh, delhi uh, which are pretty similar the the red fort and the lahore fort are uh, strikingly uh similar in their i mean of course uh, they uh the the one in uh, delhi is more elaborate and uh, more royal if i may may add and then you have uh, you know gardens like the shalimar garden in lahore and there's a uh, lodi gardens in delhi and you have jangirs and nur jahan's tombs in lahore and you have many other tombs of um, uh, mughal personalities and even the uh, you know the sultanate period uh, monuments in the uh, they are less uh, so in uh, lahore i mean you see more sultanate period uh, monuments in delhi uh, and then of course the pre uh, islamic um, re- remnants of architecture i mean uh, that uh, you also find signs of that so in overall i mean you know you you get this feel of um, uh, of a city that has such a layered history and uh, and past just like lahore uh, and that's what i felt in delhi uh, but i also uh, should add what happened after 1947 both cities have expanded beyond belief i mean delhi is far bigger than lahore uh, in that sense but you know the sprawl and the kind of post uh, partition uh, forms of architecture from the 1950s drab socialist type uh, blocks you have in delhi and uh, and then later other uh, other kinds of of um, experimental architecture uh, you see here and there and most notably this whole idea of farm houses now so delhi has many many farm houses i know many artists live there and other people and same in lahore in fact lahore has expanded so much that it is now very close you know it has expanded very uh, almost close to the indian border uh, so in a way it's really eerie that here are these two uh parts of the same uh, subcontinent divided by this border and uh, visas and immigration and patrols and customs and border security force and rangers here and yet there's such a smooth transition as you cross over so the similarities are pretty uh you know um also very stark in in many ways uh you know from the street food so a very popular form of um, uh, cuisine is found on you know street vendors small dhabas as you call in, in them in india we call them khokas or makeshift restaurants uh where you get all uh, i mean in the old uh, uh, lahore walls city of lahore you find these kulchas and uh you know alu wala naan al besan wala naan uh we have uh, keema wala naan etc and uh, so so in that sense there's a very vibrant food culture which is consumed most lovingly and uh, is uh, almost an kind of article of faith in day to day living uh but i think there are many differences as well you know as far as biryani and korma uh, are concerned uh as i wrote in my book uh, delhi by heart um delhi was a place where a lot of this food uh, uh was innovated and experimented and like even naan naan and kebab for example um uh, kebabs were not uh, uh here in the subcontinent before the turks and the persians came and brought in their recipes and their styles of cooking uh so in that sense delhi has perhaps more authentic biryani and korma uh and to some extent nihari is also but in lahore also we we get very good nihari in different parts and nihari just to remind is this long uh, long drawn out process of cooking uh, meat overnight uh, on a very low flame so that all the juices of different uh, 
kinds of meat get uh, uh, absorbed uh, with the spices uh, and uh, uh, and and the soup. So so nehari perhaps is a common common bond. Uh, so is biryani, of course. But you know, um, but I think uh, all these stereotypes uh, about you know uh, biryani, korma, etc. Uh, kind of um, fade into uh, oblivion because the reality is that most people on both sides uh, of the border, uh, more than half of the population cannot afford to meet every uh, eat meat every day. So ultimately, it is vegetarian stuff. So we have a very good dal chawal, uh, <clears throat> very authentic, very uh, spicy and yummy dal chawal. Um, in some parts of old Lahore, uh, they're very popularly cooked. Khaleem is, is, is an, another dish which is again a very rich uh, dish with, um, you know, different kinds of grains and lentils and meat and cooked on a slow, slow flame, very uh, tenderly uh, cooked and uh, um, uh, and served, you know. So, uh, so there are, of course, very obvious similarities, though you have a greater variety of uh, vegetarian cuisine in Delhi uh, because there is a big, uh, you know, uh, po vegetarian population in Delhi. So we have less so. I mean, uh, in uh, Pakistan, uh, overall, if you go out to eat, it is largely uh, things with meat or chicken or fish, etc. Uh, while on the other hand, in Delhi, you can have a fabulous vegetarian meal and and you know, feel all content and happy. I mean, there's not one dish. I mean, I would say chaat perhaps unites, you know, as a, as a kind of a favorite. Um, I mean, in Delhi, you, you, you get all sorts of papri chaat, etc. And in Lahore, you have many, many uh, spots like, uh, you know, there's a regal chalk on the old mall road which was uh, built and expanded under the Raj um, and then you have uh, the famous Anarkali chart uh, so so I, I would say that is perhaps a more common bond uh, widely eaten by rich and the poor and the middle class alike uh, and I have mentioned earlier Nihari is another one uh, Nihari is very popular you know a morning uh, weekend meal and in Delhi, you, you find uh, excellent Niharis, especially in old Delhi and other parts. So uh, I would say it's um, there's no single uh, dish, I would say, but there's a range of uh, cooking and cuisines uh, that are common. And I would say no Indian would feel stranger in Lahore and vice versa. My personal overall comment is that they're the, we are the same people. I mean, even scientific studies have shown that our DNAs are just, you know, 97% of uh, whatever uh, studies or tests they did are, are, are so similar, you know, our psychological attitudes, our attitudes towards the state, towards rules, towards law, traffic lights, you know, from the, um, the, the cuss words, uh, the bouts of anger, emotionalism, crying uh, at, uh, you know, uh, soap operas or films, uh, both in Bollywood and Lollywood. So, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's the same people. But, but of course, in Delhi and Lahore, what is striking is the overwhelming uh, presence of Punjabi culture and Punjabi language. So that's what you, because there was such a big uh, outflow, uh, out-migration of uh, the Punjabi Hindus and Sikhs from Lahore to uh, to newly formed India in 1947 and to Delhi. Um, and uh, you hear Punjabi everywhere, you know, or even, even those uh, from Haryana that constitute a large number of, uh, you know, auto drivers or taxi drivers. I mean, that's also, it's it's not Punjabi, I know, but it's uh, the, the accent is similar because you have a lot of Haryana people here as well, not as much as Delhi, uh, given the proximity. And then, uh, you know, the uh, you call them autos, or auto rickshaws, we call them rickshaw here. And they're, they were, they're everywhere. So, or, or the buses flying around on the roads, the pollution, the smog. I mean, 
let's also not be too romantic about these two cities. You know, the smog and atmospheric pollution is also a common uh, common feature. You know, the unplanned, unregulated expansion, housing societies, and you know, uh, gradual gobbling up of trees and uh, cul- cultivated areas into uh, for for the housing needs or or commercial needs. It's another common feature. So I would say in so many ways, I mean, and, and it's far more a uh, stark, you know, where once you visit there, because I mean, that's always be, been my impression in my, during my travels uh, to Delhi, uh, that so many Indians uh, think that, you know, Pakistan is this some kind of a other place, some kind of a uh, strange land uh, where you have these uh, women in burqas on the street and men Totting Klashnikovs or arms and you know, but it's it's not like that. It's just so similar. Of course, you have more women on on uh, in um, in public sphere, but increasingly in Pakistan also that has increased. You know, with the higher rates of uh, women's higher education and them participating in public life. Uh, so overall, you know, we share much more that we fight about. Because Delhi is the capital of India, so you know, you have a confluence of so many regional cultures from India. And India is a much bigger country, eight, 10 times bigger than Pakistan, with uh, with m- many, many more uh, languages uh, spoken. And uh, so you you have, um, you know, the, the kind of popular uh, street language is, is, is more uh, diverse in Delhi. But you know, oe is a common, common word you, a phrase you hear, oye, kahan ja rahe, oye, dara, or, uh, you know, sort of yelling on the streets, etc. And then let's not forget the, the cuss words, uh, you know, the sister and mother uh, abusive terms, which I don't approve of. But you, I would say if, if I hear something so uh, common uh, on the streets or at shops or if you go to Chandni Chowk in Delhi or... Or in Lahore, the uh, the marketplaces, you know, the uh, the abuses are pretty similar, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, uh, that has been one of the greatest uh, uh, things, uh, you know. In my, I mean, I was fortunate to travel to India so many times. Uh, to, from 2005 to to 20 early 2014 uh, you know regular visits and uh, and all sorts of friends i mean you know my my dearest friend sadia delvi uh, whom i used to stay with and she features in my book i mean she passed away in 2020 unfortunately but she and her circle of friends her relatives her uh, you know um, uh, i've been in touch with them and uh, and then there's a whole group of journalists i know in india you know, who live in Delhi, uh, they work in all sorts of uh, uh, media houses and uh, and uh, some and, and many writers and uh, some artists and some, you know, conference organizers and, and even socialites. So, of course, uh, um, uh, technology has really facilitated, you know, because I haven't visited since 2014 and... Um, you know, WhatsApp and Skype or uh, regular text messaging. I mean, we have uh, we have kept up. Uh, and I do have a large number of uh, uh, friends and acquaintances and people I've worked with, of people I've uh, interacted with at, you know, literary gatherings, conferences. So if I were to come back to Delhi, trust me, I would... Uh, I would be short uh, of time uh, just trying to catch up with everyone. Uh, but certainly, uh, it is it is hard, uh, you know, physical distance and the inability to travel obviously uh, has an impact on how you maintain and sustain these friendships. And sadly, that has been one of the uh, most tragic parts of our history, our recent history, uh, since 1965 war when we built Iron Curtain between India and Pakistan. Many people don't know here and in, and in India that before 65, people could travel. Uh, you know, uh, people could travel easily. Uh, they were not uh, these draconian visa regimes. 
Uh, but since then, we have really distanced people and uh, and the two nation states that emerged in 1947 have their own uh, peculiar idea of history, identity, how, what is nationalism. And people are deliberately kept into those camps and, you know, fed and brainwashed. And yet, hats off to us all that uh, we don't buy that uh, in entirety uh, in Pakistan as well as in India. So the enemy, enemy mantra dilutes and just melts away when there's a cricket match or when there's a new Bollywood flick or a song. No, I, I mean, not directly, but my, of course, my mother's uh, family used to live in Amritsar. And they all had to travel to uh, Pakistan uh, in um, uh, 1947. And obviously my uh, maternal grandfather was a very successful businessman in Amritsar. He had uh, been there for uh, decades and he also uh, had a lot of business uh, dealings in Calcutta. Uh, so Kolkata, as it's, as it's called now, was a hub of uh, trade and commerce uh, in uh, pre-1947, I mean, I mean, in the early 20th century and even, even before that. Uh, so he made lots of money by exporting, you know, uh, hides and, uh, I mean, he had tanneries in Amritsar and uh, then used to take his uh, shipments and and export them or sell them or whatever. I think he did many things. So they had to leave everything. They had to leave their home. Uh, it was a big house they had, apparently. I mean, I tried to visit it, but it had been demolished and other homes had um, been erected in its place uh, because it was obviously a very old building. And uh, so they came here and they were, they were uprooted. And then, of course, my uh, grandfather's business uh, initially... Uh, took a really um, hit and uh, from extreme prosperity for some years they were in a very difficult situation and then uh, uh, I'll tell you a story that you know my my nani or my maternal grandmother had left a, most of her jewels in a box with their Hindu neighbor because they didn't want to carry it given all the lootings and the and the stories of riots on trains and on, on foot and, and other means of transportation were so common. And then after a few years, and because I, I mentioned uh, that uh, how people could easily travel, so one, that neighbor uh, actually came to Lahore with that box all locked. He had not even opened it up and uh, they came and they gave it back to my, uh, my grandparents. And that enabled my maternal grandfather to uh, use that as capital and restart. I mean, he he got uh, some uh, uh, one business concern as a as a claim as an evacuee. You know, when uh, um, lots of people were given some sort of compensatory homes and and uh, buildings and factories, etc. Uh, but that one really helped him out. So it's a remarkable story, you know with all that uh, violence of 1947 and all that acrimony and uh, uh, the tensions, here were these people who were willing to help each other and loved each other, uh, regardless of their faith. So, I mean, that was our common past. I mean, we, we, we just cannot forget it. I mean, and unfortunately, our present moment is all about forgetting. Uh, there's deliberate uh, attempt at forgetting in India and Pakistan both. I mean, I, mean, I think uh, no one country can uh, uh, can be blamed or, or, or uh, exonerated from that process. And, it, and it's this process of forgetting that we need to uh, identify and challenge for our future. So, I mean, I, um, I mean, there are many places and many areas uh, of uh, Delhi and, and, you know, monuments and, um, you know, localities that remind me of Lahore. I mean, the list is long. I would say, I mean, I would say at a kind of a very personal, spiritual level, the Dargah of Nizamuddin Aulia, 
uh, I am a devotee and I regularly used to visit and even I now look at the pictures because you know people post pictures and videos and so in a way I'm connected I mean even I'm not physically there so that uh, that's very special to me I don't know whether it reminds me of Lahore in a way it does because uh, you know Lahore is a huge uh, shrine of uh, Data Sahab uh, another uh, 11th century saint um, who is like a really huge and influential uh, Muslim Sufi and uh, uh, so and I'm a regular visitor there whenever I'm in Lahore so that perhaps uh, explains it to me I mean uh, strikes a chord uh, but other than that the Zamudin Aulia uh, that whole area is uh, because it's I mean I know it's all it's kind of dirty and dilapidated. I mean, they've done some work, but they haven't really cleaned it up as much as uh, as it should be because it's a really uh, amazing reminder of our past. I mean, you know, the narrow alleyways and the hybridity of cultures and uh, uh, and uh, and the kind of just the ambiance is is just so amazing. Uh, and in a way, it's also a real reminder of the challenges that we have, you know, been, uh, when we forget the glossy uh, Bollywood um, films or the shining uh, India or uh, rising Pakistan slogans, you go there and you see how ordinary people are faring. I mean, and you know, they, they have tough and hard lives. So in a way, that is also one, uh, one area. But then, uh, you know, I would say that um, the um, another place, Hamayun's tomb, a, is a very uh, beautiful and um, uh, soulful uh, place, and uh, it's actually much more beautiful in 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 my way, uh, in my view, uh, than other monuments. Uh, but you know, Lahore's Jangi's tomb, which is again very special to me, and I've been going there since as a child, so they are similar as well. And when I'm at Hamayun's tomb, I don't feel I'm uh, uh, in a foreign country or in an enemy zone <laughs> but but I think the list can go on and on as I told you I never felt uh, uh, strangeness and uh, yes there were people who would make snide comments um, about Pakistan and me being a Pakistani or the wars etc but I'm I'm not interested in that uh, in that particular discourse because I feel that uh, enough of divisions and hatred let's find things that uh, can secure a, or guarantee a better future for us. I think I partly answered that uh, earlier, but uh, I would say I would say that um, you would not feel strange because uh, uh, I mean one is of course language. I mean language is so important. You know, a North Indian uh, are you know Hindi, Urdu shared sort of uh, lingua franca is uh, is so vital in, in in creating that connection of course the bengalis object to that and the people in south india say oh well you know we are not part of this uh, this uh, india pakistan love fest uh, but uh, but let me also add that uh, uh, language is not the only thing i think it's the warmth uh, of people so a lot of uh, Indians who have visited Lahore and you and you can read their accounts as well um, they face far less hostility than they anticipate or imagine and uh, at the same time you know um, the kind of um, uh, uh, how to put it I mean there's a uh, this, this, the same kind of uh, you know um, environment the same uh, a kind of uh, challenges and obstacles as well, you know, traffic jams, for example, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, or just traveling in an auto, or uh, these are they, these are such such important. I mean, these are minor things, but these are but these are like our lived experiences. Now, Delhi has a big metro. Lahore has started a metro too. I mean, you know, there's a uh, Orange Line has started functioning. And um, so, so even even there, uh, there's a growing kind of a similarity even in the 21st century. But I think uh, more importantly, uh, what uh, why people don't feel strange when they they were to tra travel to Delhi and they come to Delhi 
is the fact that you know the Delhi has such a big Muslim print imprint, you know the Muslim past. So even even Pakistanis who think that Pakistan is you know a an Islamic country or, or a Muslim country, while you know there's it it's a contested uh, identity debate in Pakistan still going on. Uh, but you know Delhi's. Uh, Muslim past is a is an amazing and a beautiful uh, reminder of where it all started and then gradually expanded and then was truncated in 1947. So I think it's that larger sense of history that overtakes uh, you as a visitor or as a as a you know a traveler. So I think I think that's where the major difference lies, uh, in the sense that Delhi is the capital of India. So as I mentioned earlier, you have people from all over India. You know, from south, from east, from northeast. Uh, you know, all these students from Assam and Nagaland and, and other parts. I mean, from Dakkan. So you have a greater diversity in Delhi. Number one. Uh, Lahore is uh, overwhelmingly Punjabi, though, you have, though we have a sizable Pakhtun population as well, you know, from the northwest of Pakistan, from the Khyber Pakhtun province, and uh, some other uh, nationalities. Uh, secondly, Delhi is also, since it's a capital, so all the, um, all the diplomatic missions are there, all the international organizations are there, so you do see a, a, a greater... Uh, you know, presence of people and uh, the events list also shows you that there, the debates and and discussions and uh, conferences in Delhi are 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 um, have a greater or a or a bigger scale. So Lahore, in that sense, is uh, uh, was uh, and remains uh, somewhat provincial. So I guess that is uh, that's a major difference. Uh, having said that, the the sizable Punjabi population of Delhi and their uh, control or or, the, or their presence in trade and commerce in uh, businesses uh, from you know small shops to hotels etc. So that kind of balances is, is it out and brings it closer to Lahore, uh, but uh, certainly uh, although although I have to say that. Um, Lahore has these islands so where you do uh, uh, experience cosmopolitanism like, you know, Lahore's uh, National College of the Arts is, a, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's Pakistan's uh, foremost art school. It's, uh, it, it gets students from all over the country. Uh, then the Government College Lahore or the Punjab University. So academic uh, institutions and campuses have that kind of diversity and pluralism. But overall, uh, no. So, and no, I mean, they changed radically. I mean, you know, uh, Delhi's sprawl, of course. I mean, you know, it's like um, Delhi's... Uh, equal to uh, the size of a con of, of a of a small <laughs> or actually a medium sized european country now uh, so the sprawl obviously you know the population inflow influx uh, after 1947 and um, in lahore as well because then it uh, became uh, uh, it grew much bigger with all the populations uh, traveling from the other side of the border so I think that's one uh, part where they changed. And then, of course, what has also happened is that, you know, after 1947, the old class structure started changing and there were emergence of these new elites. Both uh, societies experienced that. And these elites, you know, the moneyed elites, they brought in their own aesthetic. They brought in their own uh, cultural uh, footprint. And uh, so you see that a lot of, you know, garish homes uh, and architecture in the, in the modern is very much, you know, this, this ostentatious culture. And it's very prevalent in Lahore as well, in the affluent parts and la like Delhi as well. And you can see, you, you can tell that this person has spent lots of money on the home or, 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 or whatever. And then this aping of modernity, the Western style 
uh, <clears throat> uh, buildings, you know, glass, uh, glass wale towers and these, these high rises, you know, uh, they are not environmentally uh, suitable either. I mean, uh, of course, in, in, in Delhi, they've tried to, you know, uh, offset that by uh, Habitat Center in Lahore. There's Alhamra Arts Complex, which kind of uh, recreates the tradition, uh, blends it with the modern. Uh, but in general, you know, this the, the aesthetics of the cities, the two cities have changed and the culture of consumerism and that whole sense of neighborhood, community, uh, was disrupted and has uh, so now it's no longer one or two communities it's some um, multiple communities within the city uh, uh, you know uh, city limits so that obviously fragments uh, uh, the sense of a, a well-knit city the way it used to be and uh, yeah that's a, and that's a challenge and an opportunity both The list is very long. Eh? Pan Parag, for one, you know, people, uh, Lahore, uh, Pan is very popular. And so Pan Masalas and all the varieties you get in India. So for often people ask for that, you know, can you get me this set of Pan Masala, Pan Bahar or things like that. But then people want books also. A lot of books uh, that are published in India, not all reach here. So many... Uh, people ask, can you f find that book? Can you find that? And even some books in Urdu, which are published in Delhi or, or in India, in, in the UP. So you uh, often I bought those and uh, as gifts. And then uh, the women uh, like saris, uh, just the way many uh, women in Delhi, apparently I've heard, uh, like the lawn or the cotton uh, material used for shalwar kameez. Uh, so, uh, yeah, those are the common uh, kind of commonly re requested gifts. Th items that should be naturally flowing across the borders. I mean, you know, it's really crazy. I mean, I'm in Lahore right now visiting and it would take me, what, 30 to 40 minutes to get to the border. And, you know, I just cannot go uh, and vice versa. Because, I mean, now the visas have become so complicated. So these goods ought to be normally flowing like the way you have in European Union or, or, in, or in other regional uh, parts in Latin America. Uh, I don't know why, why these are restricted, you know, books, periodicals, music, food items. Uh, there's so much curiosity uh, here and there. And it's really, um, you know, it's really ridiculous. I mean, I, I sometimes feel that let the states fight their, <laughs> their battles and blame each other for everything. You know, every act of terror in, in, in India is labeled as a Pakistani um, a conspiracy and everything wrong uh, that, that, that goes wrong. Uh, here, politicians say it's an Indian conspiracy or somebody who is working on the at the behest of India, you criticize Pakistan and, and they say you are promoting Indian narrative, you know, here. And in in, in India, I'm now reading and, and, and seeing uh, on, on TV and videos that anybody who uh, criticizes the Indian government, they say, oh, well, you are, you're a Pakistani, why don't you go to Pakistan or whatever, anti-national, that, that label. So, I mean, it's really, really silly, infantile behavior in the 21st century when we have such high stakes for our future. And let me just list two or three before we end. Climate change, uh, it is, it, we, both countries are highly vulnerable to climate change. Climate change is not something that one country can, can tackle. And in South Asia, we have to cooperate. There's no other way. The pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, was an opportunity. We also lost that, I mean, you know amid nationalist battles and smog I mentioned earlier you know environmental pollution you asked about the how uh, these cities changed after 1947 so the urban sprawl and the rampant construction and and badly de designed construction and uh, you know this ostentation the culture of ostentation and aping of uh, 
Western styles of architecture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would add that how we, how both cities have destroyed their environment. The, uh, you know, the, the green spaces, uh, the lungs of the cities have, uh, have uh, been encroached upon. And there's so much, and things are, things which are being done in, in India to offset that, we can learn from that. And things that we are doing here, like, you know, the uh, Imran Khan is very much into tree plantation campaigns, etc., etc. Uh, there has to be cross-learning. I mean, it's really, really uh, silly and tragic that not only that we have to work together and we share the common past, we share a common future, whether we like it or not. The air, the waters, you know, flowing in our rivers, etc., uh, uh, you know, are not going to stop because the two governments are fighting. Mm 